Holy and righteous Father, we just thank you for the privilege of being your disciples. We thank you, Lord, that we are being led, led by you, God. Your word is a lamp to our feet, our feet and a light to our path. Lord, you said, hear, O Israel, and you've opened our ears. And Lord, yesterday you taught us is the same measure we receive. So if we're filling ourselves with junk, it's very limited what we can receive through the ears. And you said, be careful what you listen to, because the measure, the same measure you're listening to is the same measure that you're going to receive. And Lord, we thank you. <laughs> Yesterday, you cleaned our ears. Uh, Lord, you caused many of us to repent for having trash in our ears. And Lord, because we want to receive a hundredfold. We want to receive everything you have for us. And Lord, so you cleaned our ears. You prepared our heart, God. And you said, I'm going to write on the tablets of your heart. I'm going to write on your mind. I'm going to cause you by my spirit to walk in your ways. Lord, we're being regenerated. We're a new creation. We're children of God. And we thank you, God, that by faith you dwell in our hearts and we are crucified. That old life, that old Adam is crucified with Christ. I, 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 we got to get that. I have been crucified. It's not I, but him. It's him. It's him. It's all about him and them. I have been crucified. And Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, you're talking to us about healing. And you said, don't mix the holy with the profane. In the middle of, of praying for somebody, don't write prescriptions. And so, Lord, you made it very clear that you want to pour out your power. And just to keep it simple and keep it pure. And, and not to mix this outpouring with anything else in the world. And we thank you, God, for giving us such great revelation for that. And Lord, we thank you. You're a wall of fire around us, God, and a swift vengeance against the enemy forces. And yesterday you taught us, Lord, we are the garden of the Lord. We're on the narrow path. The word is going deep and it's going to bear fruit. We're not on the side of the road where the enemy comes quickly and steals what you've planted into the heart. Lord, we're on the narrow pathway because of your grace, your goodness. And I thank you, Lord, and you responding. You said, draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. Wow, God. We're in it to win it. You're going to bring us all the way to the finish line with shouts of grace, grace to it. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we're going to be very important now in verse 26 through 29, Mark chapter 4. So I want to read these first. Again, don't forget, what is the seed? What is the seed? When he gives seed to the sower, what does he give? The word. The word. You get a star for today. The word. You got it. The word, the word, the word. He gives seed to the sower. He gives revelation to the sower. He's he's. It's the word, the word, the word. And the war is the enemy out there wants to knock you off the narrow pathway, right? He can steal the word. But we're not going to let him do that, are we? We're going to ask the Lord, Lord, keep a guard. You know, we say keep a guard over our heart. But Scott and I were talking last night, keep a guard over our ears. Keep a guard over our eyes. Keep us clothed in Christ, Lord. Just hem us in all the way around. And Lord, quicken us quickly. If our eye gate or ear gate is open to felth, just, just let us have the quickening power of the Spirit. Don't listen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, let's, Scott, if you could read 26 through 29, and then we're going to uh, share a, a testimony. 
And he was saying, the kingdom of God is like a man who casts seed upon the soil. And he goes up to bed at night and gets up daily and the seed sprouts and grows. How? He himself does not know. The soil produces crops by itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the mature grain in the head. Now when the crop permits, he immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. In, yesterday we talked about the seed is the word of God. We know right here, verse 15, the ones that are beside the road where the word is sown, hanging out on the edge of the road, not on the narrow pathway. When they hear the word, immediately Satan comes and takes away the word which was sown into him. Now it's talking about the kingdom is, is the kingdom of God's like a man that casts the seed. And when you look up the word cast, we know it means to throw, but it also means it's so beautiful in the root word to pour into the river. Live over to one's care, not quite sure what the results will be. And so what he's talking about, the seed goes in, right? The seed goes in to good soil because the Lord has prepared the soil of our heart. When we're listening to the word, he's pulling out weeds. He's, he's, he's taking out what are those bugs that eat all the grass we have in Florida. He's taking all that out. Let's get rid of these bugs. Let's get rid of this, the moles, the rats. And so he's, he prepares the soil and the word goes deep. And it says, so the man, he cast his seed and he goes to bed at night. He gets up in the morning and look at this beauty because we're, we're made out of dirt. Okay. So he said, the seed sprouts and grows. And he says, how? The man doesn't even know, but one plants, one waters, but there's only one that gives increase. God gives the increase. So the seed goes in, you go to rest the next day. It's, it's a blade. It's, it's new, fresh leaves. And it says the soil produces crop by itself. First, the blade then the head, then the mature green in the head. And when I looked at the word, the mature, I wanted to look out to see because I knew that that would probably have something for us in that. And when you look up the mature green, it says of the soul permeated, complete, lacking nothing. So when this green comes to a full head, it's lacking nothing. And God's saying, this is what the kingdom of God is like. The word goes in, it's planted, it's watered. God gives the increase. You're sleeping, it's increasing. And look at this, then it'll come into the fullness. It'll come into the maturity, let completely full, the full head, lacking nothing, nothing. How beautiful is that? Totally complete, lacking nothing, perfect. Just perfect. And I want to tell you something. There were people in the Bible that were called blameless and perfect, and they were still sinners. So I want to tell you, when God gets you to that place, blameless and perfect, you're not going to sin like you do today. But don't think that you got to wait till you get sitting on some pew in heaven to be blameless or perfect. He told you to be perfect. He told you to be holy. He told you to be complete, be mature. He wants to put everything in you. He wants you to be full of him. I am crucified. The house is empty. I am crucified, right? The house is empty. So what is he doing? He plants the word in, he puts furniture in it. He puts gifting in it, a lamp in it. I mean, and when he gets done, the house is fully furnished. So this is very beautiful right here. I think it was two days ago, a man called me. He had read the Bible many times. He had bought a book. Uh, what's the name of the book, uh, Scott? 
Uh, imitation of Christ. Imitation of Christ. After he read the Bible, he imitation of imitation imitation. You know, we learn about Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. He read the book, The Imitation of Christ, so he could learn how to walk Christ-like. He liked what he read in the Bible. He was around people. Nobody, nobody talked to him about Christ. And he called, and he's a brilliant, brilliant person. Okay, and you're, you'll meet him. You'll meet him soon. I said, wow. You read a book, How to Imitate Christ, and you've read the Bible. What about, have you asked God to forgive your sins? No. So we go through the process, the sinner's prayer. We, you know, we lead him to Christ. He accepts Christ into his heart. He's sealed with the spirit. The word goes in and he's rejoicing. Well, on his calendar, this is a businessman. Or two hours later, he has an appointment. It, it was one, it was a pre-arranged appointment. Now, I thought it was a couple of days. It was a couple of hours. Pre-arranged appointment from a dating service. He gets on there and the woman kind of scolding. You're not part of any religion, are you? No, he says. Beautiful woman. Um, you don't have anything to do with any of that uh, fixed religion, do you? No, he says. And she says, okay, I'm a Satanist. I'm going to, I want you to be a Satanist with me. And starts pouring out from the pit of hell. Go back. I, I, and I was so grateful. This man shared the testimony and gave me permission to share with you. Two hours after the seed was planted into his heart. Mark 4, 15. Hanging out beside the road. In the world, one foot in, one foot out, there Satan comes immediately and pulls it out of his heart. Immediately. And I'm not going to share his name because that's he'll he'll share it and he'll share more. But I want to pray for this this man. Lord, I thank you that this man repented. He was like, What happened? You know, wow. I'm telling you, there's a war out there. And if you're leading someone to Christ, immediately pray protection over the seed and pray protection over the seeds of those, of everybody on the Bible study. Because I tell you, this was like eerie to me. I thought, whoa, that beast, that dragon's just waiting to come after the seed. It's a war against the treasure in your heart. When I said that to you yesterday, I was serious. And after I got this testimony, it's even, you know, like, whoa, we got to be alert. And Lord, I pray for every disciple, those that are online and those that are not with us and those that are part of living bread all around Jerusalem and Nairobi and around in Asaf and everyone connected. Guard the treasure, Lord. Send out ministering angels and guard the treasure. And Lord, I ask that you cut off the tongues of every foul and unclean spirit that would try to steal the seed, the treasure that's in our heart. Because it's going to, God, what is God going to do? Even while you're sleeping, it's going to come into bloom. It says the man goes to sleep. He don't understand what's happening. It's alive. It's active. It's, it's the living God. It's regenerating you. It's making you throw down your cigarettes. It's making you say, no, I don't really want a, a drink tonight. It's, it's, it's saying, no, I'm not going to get angry. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. You know, it's transforming you. It's alive, active, sharper than a two-edged sword, regenerating us, making us like Christ. And when this man shared, and I'm so thankful he gave me permission to share this, it was like, wow, there's a real war out there. We read there is. You know, we read it yesterday, and it was interesting. I get the testimony like about, I don't know, Early last night, not too many hours after we read 
about Satan coming to steal the seed. And yesterday I just felt, no, we can't, we can't move quickly through here. This God's really trying to unpack something for us. He's trying to bring a revelation to us so we can understand, guard the treasure in your heart. Guard your ears. Don't listen to the slime. You know, daily, you know, we talk about armor. God said, pure religion to him. In James, if anyone wants to look that scripture up for me, in James, it's to take care of widows, it's to take care of orphans, and it's to keep oneself unspotted from the world. And so, Lord, I just feel like you go to take a shower, Lord, and this is what how they told me to remember to ask forgiveness for sins. I get in the shower, Lord, Forgive me my sins, wash out my ears, wash out my eyes. Lord, be a guard over the gates of my house. And Lord, keep the treasure protected that it can come to a full ear, a full ear, a full treasure. I have the scripture, James 1, 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Right. And keep oneself being polluted by the world. And also the uh, New American Standard said unspotted from the world. So you can do this as an exercise. When you take a shower, Lord, forgive me all my sins, wash my ears, wash my eye gates, Wash and keep the treasure safe. I mean, that's that's a good way to remember to ask God to clean your ears and clean your eyes when you're in the shower. You can just remember, okay, time, Lord, it's time to meet with our king. 30 through 41. <clears throat> and he was saying, how shall we picture the kingdom of God or by, or by what parable shall we present it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the soil, though it is the smallest of all the seeds that are upon the soil, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and forms large branches with the results that the birds of the sky can nest under its shade. And with many such parables, he was speaking the word to them so far as they were able to understand it. And he did not speak to them without a parable for he, but he was explaining everything privately to his own disciples. On that day, when evening came, he said to them, let's go over there to the other side. After dismissing the crowd, they took him along with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a fierce gale of wind developed, and the waves were breaking under the boat so much that the boat was already filling with water. And yet Jesus himself was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care what we are perishing? And he got up and rebuked the wind under the sea. Hush, be still. And the wind died down and it became perfectly calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? They became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? Um, this is really amazing right here in verse 30. Uh, I ha I didn't see this before. How shall we picture? What kind of vision shall we have for the kingdom of God? He said, when it says, how shall we picture? What, it, what does your Bible say in verse 30, Vivian? Um, I have the New King James right now. It says, and he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what? Or with what parable shall we picture it? Okay, uh, I looked up the word liken because that's the King James and it means illustrate, illustrate. So so what kind of vision, what kind of picture shall we have here of the kingdom of God? By what parable shall we present it? And that's what the Lord says. What parable shall we present it to the people? And he, he said, it's like a mustard seed. And a mustard seed, I have some from Israel. It's like pepper. It's very small seeds. They're in little pods, but it's just like pepper. And it's sown upon the soil, though it's smaller 
than all the other seeds on the soil. And so, and even the Lord said, with the kingdom of heaven, when the man sows a seed, he goes to bed, he doesn't even know how it's growing. So here again, the mustard seed, like a piece of pepper, yet when it's sown, it's going to become larger than all the garden plants and forms large branches. So the birds of the air can nest under its shade. So that's quite amazing. The kingdom of heaven, even if we can't see it, is rapidly spreading throughout the earth. And his kingdom is an endless. Okay, so his kingdom knows no end. But I, I want to talk right here, 34. So he's only speaking to the world in parabolic language. But to his disciples, he's unpacking it all. He's explaining everything to them so they can understand. And that's why he brings revelation to us. He's you're his disciple. He wants you to have understanding. And he keeps taking us deeper and deeper into more realms of understanding. The whole idea of the picture of the mustard seed is really very powerful because like, like it says, it grows up to be the largest of trees. And a lot of people when they start looking at the word of God and they don't understand how, how powerful it is. This word isn't like any other word. This, this isn't just words on a page. This word has power. It has power to, to convict and to uh, produce repentance, to cleanse, to heal. He says, I sent forth my word and heal. This is like no other word. And if we will understand through faith and grab hold of this and put the time into it, God's word said it will not go forth void. It will accomplish that for which he sent it. So just the understanding, just like that mustard seed, it just looks like you could drop it and you'll never find it again. Like you said, it's spreading throughout the word, the world. This word is power and the Holy Spirit. And it has every promise and every law of God. There's nothing like the word of God. Amen. And you know, in verse 34, look what he says. He's not explaining to people out there the mysteries and secrets of God. But don't we feel very privileged how he unpacks things for us all the time. He shares with his disciples. It's very, very important that we understand in Mark chapter three in verse 21, his people were going to go take custody of him. They thought he had lost his mind, right? The scribes are saying, Jesus Christ, he cast out demons. He cast out demons by Beelzebub. All right. And he called them to himself. And he says, how can Satan cast out Satan? I've heard so many people in different prayer times say, well, maybe they committed the unforgivable sin. Don't ever let that damnation come from your lips. Because this is what the Lord showed me. He says, if Satan has risen up about himself, he can't stand. And then he goes on and he says, they're all blaspheming him, even his own family. He's got a devil. He's casting out by the devil. They're blaspheming Jesus. They're not blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And he says, whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit doesn't give forgiveness, but is guilty. But he said, all sins are forgiven that are blaspheming the son of man. His own family was saying he's, he's got something wrong in his head. That back then, they didn't talk about mental institutions. They talked about demons. If you were some man out there cutting yourself or you were doing crazy things, they thought you had demons. It's only over 2,000 years the demons have gotten pretty slick and have learned how to hide in the closets and in the bushes. But back then, it was demons. If you were out of your mind, you had a problem with demons. All through the Gospels, anybody that's got a problem with their mind has demons. So his own family 
wants to arrest them. And they're not going to be forever in hell damnation. And Jesus said, hey, if they blaspheme against the Son of Man, they're forgiven. However, if they blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, eternal damnation. So don't speak it from your lips. Don't. Don't even speak it over anybody. Because he's saying right here, they're blaspheming him. They're saying that guy right there has a devil. All right? They're not, they're not calling out the Holy Spirit. They're talking about him casting out demons by the devil. And he's saying they will be forgiven. So take this revelation on board. Okay? Take it on board. And don't ever uh, say, well, that they probably got some kind of, they probably blaspheme the spirit. Don't even talk like that. You're a disciple of Christ. So I was so thankful that he brought that revelation last night. He said, go back and read it again. They're talking about me, my own family. <laughs> you know, they're talking about me casting out demons by the devil. He said, they're not calling out the spirit of God. So it's, I just wanted to make that clear. Now we have that clear in our library, right? So in a prayer meeting, we're not going to hear, well, that guy probably committed some unforgivable sin. That's a horrible, horrible thing to even speak over anybody. Uh, eternal damnation. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure the library was together there. Um, so then he goes on, he's explaining everything to his disciples. So then we go on and he says, it's getting dark. And the crowd said, he said, leaving the crowd, this, this is amazing. He wasn't chasing the crowd. He was leaving the crowd, but who he was going with his treasures, his disciples in a fierce gale. Now, you know, what's so interesting about this story. He's talking about the seed. He's talking about the seed of the kingdom coming to the fullness. He's talking about this is all one discourse here. He's talking about Satan trying to steal the seed. So he's this is all one discourse. You know, it's still on the same day. It's on the same day. Now they're in the boat. And here comes the storm. Going to try to steal the seeds. And he just spent all this time packing all this seed into him. And here comes the storm. And so the it, it's kind of amazing when you look at it in its context and see it's all the same day. They just had this wonderful teaching. The devil's going to try to steal the seed, keep it hidden. The kingdom of God is like the mustard seed, the parable of the seed, and, and the full ear of corn come into the fullness of what God has. Now they're in a boat. He's sleeping. And they're saying, Do you, don't you care? We're dying. <laughs> you know, it's, wait a minute. Did you forget your lessons from today? <laughs> Did you forget your lessons? Don't you care? We're, we're perishing. And he gets up. Could you imagine? He wakes up and he's some Bible version say, peace, be still, peace, be still. And that's it. Immediately. The storm is calm. I spoke that over a storm the other day. I said, Lord, you spoke peace, be still to the storm. And it stopped. And in the name of Jesus, I'm going to speak peace, be still. And it stopped. And it said the wind went down and become perfectly calm. And he said, why are you afraid? And how is it you have no faith? That's what he's saying in the middle of the storm. What, ha what happened to faith? What happened to our weakened discipleship? He says, how, how, how are you afraid? How can you be afraid? After all I've taught you, you know, we're already at chapter four. <laughs> I, I can just see the Lord. How can you be afraid after all I've been teaching you, all I've been unpacking, all the mysteries I'm sharing with you? You know, how can you be afraid? And where's your faith? And so they become very much afraid and said to one another, who is this? Who's this in our boat? 
They were even more afraid. I think they were even more afraid when he calmed the sea. It says they become very much afraid in verse 41. That's after the storm is over. After the storm is over, they're terrified and they're like, who's in this boat with us? So that's quite amazing. They're like, who is, who is this guy in our boat? That even the sea and the storms, they were more afraid of that than more afraid of the miracle. But I do want to tell you that um, the, it, I'm just kind of making sure our summary is clean. Remember when the Lord said, you're going to pray for somebody. The heaven's going to open. God's going to do a miracle. And he said, don't mix it with your own head and your own prescriptions. And you know what he showed me, which some of you that know the story, remember when the man grabbed the ark and was trying to hold it up? Yep. Yeah, that's what God says. Don't grab the ark when I'm pouring out a miracle. He died, right? He died. Yeah, he died. It, the Lord said what, the grace of God is he still doing miracles and the grace of God is nobody's died. But the Lord is telling us, don't grab the ark. Don't pray the heaven open and I'm pouring out a miracle and then grab the ark. Uh, go take your zinc B, B2. I mean, if you're going to want to give prescriptions, you know, don't do it when, when God's moving. Don't grab the ark and try to help God. Because God wants to heal. There's a lot of people out there that need healing. You know, every day we hear of young people dropping dead. There's a, there's a lot of people that need healing. And God wants to bring a great healing. But he's saying to us, don't grab the ark. Don't, don't help him. You know, we're praying. We pray open the heaven at your own fingertips. You could be laying hands on somebody and God's going to do a miracle. But he doesn't need the assistance of grabbing the ark. So I think that's everything up to chapter four. I just wanted to make sure that we had all the revelations and God gave us a tremendous testimony. Hey, I just love the, the parable of the seed or the mustard seed. And just like seeds, they grow quietly, but persistently. And um, like the growth of God's kingdom, it's like it's divine power. It's not human effort. And it, I mean, they get, it just has amazing growth of like God's kingdom, which will reach across all, all boundaries and international boundaries to all people and nations. And um, before it's finished, I just I love that. Yeah, that's a beautiful analogy. That's good revelation, Christy. Because it is, and while you were speaking, I was even thinking his power. You know, you don't you can't put it in a box. And like he said in the parable before, the man goes to sleep. You know, the man goes to sleep. The next morning, the blade is through the ground. Mm -hmm. Kingdom of God. He didn't know how that happened. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Uh, Vivian. Sorry. Uh, one of the things we have to always hold on to, remember is that and the reason is because in our it's our nature to try to take care of things ourselves especially if you grew up uh fending for yourself taking care of yourself uh, i used to i used to think years ago before i was saved that i could do anything that i wanted to do if i worked hard enough and um, the thing a problem about that is anything that you build yourself you got to maintain yourself but God didn't mean us to try to take care of ourselves. And it's only through the power of God. It's only through faith in his word that we are saved, that we are transformed uh, and we are delivered. We cannot deliver ourselves. There's no, I don't care how hard we work, how, uh, you know, how many loops we jump through. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot heal ourselves. We cannot deliver ourselves. We cannot change ourselves. And it is the power of God's word and God's word only. So like it says in uh, 4, I think it's 25, that um, to the measure that we put into it is the, the virtue and the Amplified says the virtue that we 
get back and the knowledge we get back. So um, it's the word. I, I don't, I've talked to a number of people that were believing for healing or, or deliverance and they couldn't get there. And I would ask them, what scriptures are you standing on? And they didn't have any. So in other words, they were just trying to make it happen themselves. And that is just the flesh. And the flesh is not going to cut it. It's the word of God only. So whatever you're dealing with, go to that scripture, scriptures pertaining to that, and plant those seeds, water those seeds, and hold on to faith that God's word does not go forth void. It's going to accomplish it. I just want to encourage people to do that because I have fallen into that because I had a pattern of trying to take care of myself and trying to make things happen. Uh, that's a good word. If anybody needs a promise book, you just send me a text message and with your address and we'll, we'll mail you a promise book. It All it has in it is scriptures. Nobody's opinion. Um, but if you're really contending and really standing for a healing, you need to stand. It is written every day. That's your medicine. It is written. It is written. It is written. Um, okay. Any other thoughts, questions before we, uh, oh, thank you, Robin. Yeah. You, uh, Robin gave us two Samuel six, seven. And, uh, the, were the, Uz is it Uzziah who touched the ark and was killed? Send me the promise. Okay, I will now go. Um, any Patricia? Um, I just want to say thank you because Vivian, this is the second thing that she said today that just it really, really struck me and. Um, because I've been feeling like doubts recently because things just are so difficult. And the Lord showed me this beautiful gold star that um, because of her words that, that, that he had given me. So I want to say thank you. I really needed to hear what, what I heard today. Thanks. Great. So the word gives us hope as well along the way. Because Amen. You know, it takes time for those seeds to be planted and watered. You know, it starts in the roots first, and you don't see that. You don't see what's going on. You don't see the growth that's happening. It's happening inside. You don't see that. But then you start seeing the manifestation, and, and, and the word gives us hope to have patience and endurance until we get that final breakthrough. Amen. Amen. So, great. Uh, let's go to five, one through 20. They came to the other side of the sea into the region of the Gerizims. He got out of the boat immediately. A man from the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs and no one was able to bind him anymore. Not even with a chain because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles born in pieces, uh, torn and broken in pieces and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Constantly, day and night, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and cutting himself with stones. Seeing Jesus from a distance, he ran up and bowed before him and shouting with a loud voice, he said, what business do you have with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had already been saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them to the region, out of the region. Now there was a large herd of pigs feeding nearby in the mountain. And the demons begged him, saying, send us into the pigs so that, they may, so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission, and coming out, the unclean spirits entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, about 2,000 of them, and they were drowned in the sea. Their herdsmen ran away and reported it to the city and in the countryside, and the people came to see what it was that had happened. And then they came to Jesus and saw the man, saw the man who had been demon-possessed sitting down clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had previously been legion, and they became frightened. Those who had seen it described to them how it had happened 
to the demon-possessed man and all about the pigs. And they began to beg him to leave their region. And as it, as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed was begging him that he might accompany him. And he did not let him, but he said to him, go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. Isn't that amazing? An instant evangelist. And you start now what the clues are. He came to the other side of the sea. He got out of the boat. Here's all this preaching about the seed and the sower. Immediately, a man's coming up from the tombs with the legion. Two thousand demons in this man. Okay? And he was saying... He was dwelling among the tombs. Nobody's able to bind him anymore, even with a chain. And this, I kind of, I, I take this, not offense to anybody. Um, but what happens when you have a doctor that doesn't understand demonic possession or demons? They begin to prescribe you different things to bind what's in you. They, they're, they're medicating the demons, okay, try some Prozac, Thorazine. They, they're binding them and they're trying to put chains around them so that you can make it through the day or make it through your life, right? So he's, this is, no one's able to bind him anymore. None of the, it, it modernized this, none of the drugs are working. So we'll just have to stick this one in an institution until we can combine different drugs and see what's going to keep these things bound. That's what they're really doing. They don't know it because their book, their, their book, their head is full of books instead of spiritual revelation. And the Lord is already telling this. And look at this. This is madness. Look at madness of mind. They've got them bound with shackles and chains and the demons are tearing apart the shackles and chains. I mean, they do have superpower. Um, and nobody's strong enough to subdue the demon-possessed man. Nothing can give him peace but Christ. Nothing. Nothing. He's demon-possessed. What you got out there in the world is a lot of programs, a lot of drugs, and, and they're all just trying to do the same thing. They're trying to medicate the devil because they don't have the revelation. And it says the Lord had already been, he had been saying to him when he got out of the boat, he's already speaking. Come out of the man, you foul and unclean spirit. He's already speaking. And he says to him, and this in verse nine is a lesson for all of us, okay? What is your name? Okay, if you've got time to sit and interview demons, that's a different story, isn't it? I don't. They said, well, we, uh, Legion, there's 2,000 of us. Some people preach if you don't know the name of every demon, you can't get them out. Could you imagine 2,000 demons? How much time you got to, and they're all going to be puking and telling you lies and telling you different stories. So he's, he's teaching us something here. And he began to, they begin to tell him not to send him out of the country. Wow. Look at this. They're territorial. Don't send us out of this nation. It says, don't send us out of the country. And now there's a large herd of swine feeding and the demon said, send us into the pigs. And the pigs were unclean. They were, they were unclean. And coming out of the unclean spirits, they, and coming out, the unclean spirits enter the pigs, 2,000 of them, and they're drowned in the sea. And then the herdsmen ran into the city and they're, he's telling everybody, he's probably telling them, we lost our pigs. We lost our livestock. He didn't seem to have much care or compassion for the man that's sitting there in his right mind. 
And they're very, very afraid. Now think about it. You lived with this crazy person up in the gateway of the city for, for 20, 30 years. Who knows how much time? Nobody could even walk by him. People tried to chain him and shackle him. He was the talk of the town, probably the talk at the dinner table, the mad guy up there that nobody can chain. There, there was probably a lot of talk about this and all of a sudden he's in his right mind. All of a sudden he's in his absolutely right mind. And it said they were afraid. Many people are afraid of the power of God. And I tell you what, there's a holiness when the ark comes through. That's why he said the wisdom of God is the fear of God. Don't touch the ark. And this is what happened. I mean, he is totally in his right mind and they're telling everybody in the town and they come out and beg him, get out of our area, go. We don't want you here. They, they're they not asking him about the kingdom. They're not asking him about the miracle. It, you know, they're probably wounded a bit about their money, but I think they were really afraid of him because I'm sure this mad man had been the talk of many tales who lived up there because it said they kept chaining them and binding them and nothing could hold this guy in prison. And it says he was getting into the boat, the man in his right man implored, begging him, take me with you, Jesus. How beautiful. And he didn't let him, but he said, go home and tell him what the great things are that the Lord has done and how he had mercy on you. Now look at most of them. He said, keep this a secret, but look at the heart, the heart of this instant evangelist. He's, he goes around and he is preaching what Christ had done. And everywhere he goes, look at verse 20. People are amazed. He's another one like the woman at the well. He belongs to me. Go preach. He's preaching and people are amazed wherever he's going. You can see it. Verse 20. He's preaching. People are amazed. He's evangelizing. Wow. Wouldn't that make the religious community upset? Okay. Now I want to pray. And we, we have some time here. Listen, I, I want to, anybody who's being bothered by a tormenting spirit or a legion or anything like this, I just want to pray for you right now because the Lord, he didn't interview the demons. He didn't have time. He was busy preaching the kingdom. He had places to go. He had people to preach the good news to. He's, you know, he's, he's not sitting there. Well, what did your grandma, grandfather make moonshine? Uh, did you bring sorcery in? Now I know when you get into discipleship, the Lord takes you deeper and, and there's something that bothers you and you repent for the sin and break off the generational curse. But like Vivian said, if you're in the narrow pathway, Nothing's going to get you. But if you're hanging out on the road, that inequity, I mean, it comes for you. And the Lord showed us in the old covenant, repent for it, get it, get it out of your way, not just for you, for your grandchildren, your family. But like Vivian told us the other day in Christ told us, you ask him into your heart, forgive you of your sins. That's it. You're plant your feet on the, walkway, the narrow gate. And I love the simplicity of, of what Christ is doing here. And he's showing us it's a, it, no flesh could hold somebody with demons down. No doctor could. There's nothing. I mean, today they, they would have probably euthanasia the guy. They would probably said, oh, we got to put this guy out of his misery. And that's the way it is. And that's the way we were talking this morning. Anything you build without the spirit of God is going to become a mess. 
And so I want to pray for people. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you're gripped by fear, if you're afraid of the dark, afraid of voices, if, if there's a tormenting spirit, if, if something's bothering you, always telling you, swearing at you, telling you you're never going to be anything, just telling you that, that you're the unclean one after you've been washed in the blood, you know, trying to steal the treasure from your heart. Holy and righteous Father, I thank you, God. As soon as you got out of the boat, you began to speak to the unclean spirit to get out. And Lord, we are your disciples. We are children of God. And Lord, you're purifying us. You're purifying our body, our soul, and our spirit, God. And Lord, I thank you. All of our sins are forgiven, known, and unknown. And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I thank you for your power. And Lord, it is written, come out of the man, you foul and unclean spirit. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, we say, come out of your children. You foul and unclean spirit. That's what he's calling the legion. Foul and unclean. It doesn't matter if there's 20,000, 40,000, or one or two. You got to come out. The Lord rebuke you. And Lord, I thank you for putting them into the abyss and never letting them return. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I thank you, God, for flooding your disciples with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for those that have been having trouble sleeping. They're going to sleep peacefully around the campfire of the Lord. Lord, we're your bride. We're your bride, God. And I thank you that it's on your heart to raise her up to be pure holy and spotless. And I thank you, Lord, for every bothersome demon, sorcerer, witchcraft spirit, God, occult spirit, Lord, perverse spirit, confusion, everything, God, um, per, uh, sexual spirit, every lust, everything, lying, exaggerating, stealing. I thank you, Lord. They all got to go today. Because listen, when you say the Lord rebuke you, legion, that covers 2,000 different foul and unclean categories, maybe 4,000. A legion of soldiers could be 45,000. So we speak in the name of Jesus Christ. Legion, let my people go, says the Spirit of the Lord. Come out of them. In Jesus' name, says the Spirit of the Lord, and do not return. And I thank you for a swift judgment to the legion. And I thank you, Lord, never to come back in Jesus' name. And I thank you, God. We are the redeemed, and we're going to rise up and say so in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, Vivian had a scripture. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. And Lord, I thank you. We're sealed in the blood and we're full of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless thee. And keep thee, the Lord made his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace.